Hi, welcome into the studio and to this Kingfisher in Pastels demonstration. Now I'm working on light grey pastel matte paper and I've chosen light grey because I want to make all the colours uh, stay nice and vibrant. So it's not white, although it looks, uh, it is quite white, it's not a pure white, it's more of an off-white, so we can still see white highlights. If I put a white pastel pencil on this, you'd really uh, be able to see the difference. Now I've transferred as per normal my image to the pastel matte paper and what you're seeing is just an initial blocking in. So while, while uh, you're observing that I'll talk a bit about what else you're seeing on the screen. On the left I've selected some of the those greeny and uh, bluey kind of tones. On the right almost out of shot there's the oranges for the bird's uh, chest area. And you can see lots of different um, brands of pencils in there as well. Now those are colours that I've um, collected over the last couple of years that I've been doing pastels. So I've got Carbothello in there, Pitt in there, Gioconda. Um, so you just got to use the, the selection and the collection that you've actually got yourself. As I said, I've built those up over time, but even then I haven't got exact colour matches. So you'll see me layering one colour over another to try and get close to what you're seeing in the reference at the top of the screen. Now with pastels we normally work pretty much from mid-tone to light or dark to light because we can overlay so easily. Now with this Kingfisher as you can see on that little piece of paper I'm using I've done lots of little tests on there and you can even see a test towards the top where I've um, tried to work out how to do this top of the head where we've got lots of that vibrant blue and light colors and then those dark stripey marks on there as well. And what I found by doing those tests is for me personally the best way is to get the light vibrant tones down first on that part of the head as I'm doing now and then overlay those dark stripes because a dark it's easier to um, darken a light color than to put a dark under layer and try and get a vibrant light color to sit on top of it. We're always going to get some form of contamination any way we go because there's going to be pastel underneath. But by putting the lighter tones on first as I said as I'm doing now I can overlay those darker ones with the least amount of contamination and because I don't need very dark pure blacks for those um, feather markings or stripey markings, that'll work just fine. If I had to have a very dark, like I say, a pure black in any of those areas, I'd want to leave that area um, undrawn or without any contaminating pastel underneath. And you'll see me do things like that on the beak where I'll just go straight in with the darks. But for this, I'm going to build those darker tones up on top. So I wanted to cover those general reasons so you can see why I'm working on this particular one in the way that you'll see. Now over on my Patreon channel uh, you get access to a full version of this. It's around about one and a half hours long. And on that you'll see me go into great detail with a lot of real-time footage on there showing exactly how I draw this Kingfisher. It's only four dollars and with that you get access to two years worth plus of other videos as well. Uh, 20 more full-length pastel videos plus oils and a lot more. So that's for people who want to see a longer version. So I'm going to speed this up now and then I'll do a voiceover just to show you exactly how I tackle this fairly difficult subject. So in these early stages I'm just blocking in the general uh, tones, colours, kind of mid-tones really. I'm not going too light or too dark yet. And I'm using pencils throughout all of this drawing. The only thing I put in with um, sticks or softer pastels is the background. And I wanted to keep that simple on this um, demonstration on my Patreon channel because lots of people have only got pencils and there's no reason why you can't do um, whole drawings with pencils. It's just that the pencil actually contains very little pastel compared to a stick so they can weigh down very quick. So as you can see, just blocking in. The paper I'm resting my hand on is glassine. And every now and again, you'll see me use a stump to smudge the pastel and push it into that pastel matte paper. 
Now the reason I haven't put the background in yet is because with things like the dark pastel going on the beak is a tendency then for those uh, particles to end up on the background and contaminate it with a with a dust so that's why I put the background in later on. Now so I put the pastel in with a soft pastel stick then I toned it a little bit with a pencil before blending it with my fingers. So now I'm starting on that banding you can see how easily the dark is going over the light. If I'd done it the other way around and put a darker underlay I never would have got that uh, real punchy vibrancy that I wanted on these colours. Now obviously pastel uh, light goes over dark much more easily than it does with coloured pencil but even then I want to uh, give myself the best chance to get that punchy look and that's why I went in with the lighter colours first. Now I'm really punching the colours up. The good thing with pastels again is you get lots and lots of vibrant punchy colours and if I was doing this in oils I would have used exactly the same technique. Oils, oil painting and pastels very very similar in their application and the way you work from generally dark to lighter tones. Here I'm just starting to put in some of the more final details. This was only a, a relatively quick study as I said it's about two hours long from start to finish but a new subject for me I'd never done a uh, kingfisher before so it's a very interesting subject to do. I just add in some of the finer details and I could have worked on this longer and longer with uh, much more refinement but I find some of the drawings I do are like a more uh, paintly look to it or more uh, looser look to it some I rather do very very detailed and when you're doing your subjects obviously that's totally up to you when I'm putting the details in I'm using a nice sharp pencil my favourite some would be Carbothello or Pit because they are that bit harder so they sharpen nice with a crank handle sharpener and I can get lots of fine detail. With the softer pencils like the Geoconda, the Caran d'Ache, they're a bit more difficult to actually get a nice fine point to them. So I don't use those much for details. Hope you've enjoyed this really short overview video. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus. That comes free with it. Also, you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.